Hey guys, welcome back. In this video, we are talking about the geometry of pure bending problems. So we want to make sure we have just all of the geometry and all the variables worked out before we start talking about stress and strain in the elastic range. And that's what we're doing in this video. So looking here, this is the side view of a beam of a prismatic member to be exact. This has some 3D uh, properties to it because this is the end view. So what we're looking at, this is a trapezoidal beam. And what we want to do is we want to apply a moment to it uh, kind of like that on each end and we want to bend it so we're going to end up with a, uh, a positive internal moment and we get the curvature like this where the, the concave side is up and we have that positive internal moment. So looking at this, the reason I drew it as a trapezoid was just to highlight the neutral axis which I've, uh, which I've written here in uh, or I've drawn on in purple, kind of pinky, whatever, this is the neutral axis. Um, and the neutral axis, if you remember, it passes through the uh, this centroid of the cross section of that shape. So for a trapezoid, the centroid is going to be closer to the bottom. So that's why this is not exactly halfway from the bottom to the top. Now this is another line. This is just a line of interest that we're going to be inspecting because eventually we will want to be calculating the stress and strain. And uh, those stress and strain vary linearly with distance away from the neutral axis. So you'll actually be developing larger stresses the further you go. So you'll see in this case, you'll be able to get larger, you'll be getting larger stresses uh, under a certain loading condition at the top here than you would at the bottom. So let's move on and start labeling some of the points that we have here. Let's call this corner here A, we'll call this one B. We'll call where the line here, this line of interest, where we could have drawn it anywhere, I just put it somewhere. Uh, it's pretty arbitrary where we place it. Uh, we'll call that C on that end and D on that end. And then for the neutral axis here, uh, this end, let's call it E, F, and uh, E, F, G, and H, just like that. All right, so when we, when we apply these moments, maybe let's just draw them on. So we apply these moments like that, and, and, we, and we get this. We get this situation down here happening. So when we do that, we get a circular curvature and the distance from the center of curvature to any point on the neutral axis is always going to be uh, what we call rho. This is the radius of curvature. So we'll draw it on, uh, maybe let's draw it on like this over here. So we'll draw that parallel, bam. Maybe actually, let's draw on some markers here. So if we were to extend, um, let's go like that. If we were to extend these uh, normal out from this, these lines will be of interest to us. Uh, I don't think we need that one. Um, and then and then same thing, this distance. So what we're doing is we're measuring the distance from the neutral axis to the center of curvature. And uh, this is what we call the radius of curvature. And we call that rho. Now when we want to eventually find the uh, the normal stress and strain at some point uh, in the profile of the the cross section of this member we're going to have to change by we're going to have to move away from the neutral axis by a distance and if we move away uh, by this distance here we'll just call this y. So this is just the distance from the neutral axis to some other plane of interest that we're that we're looking at. Now if we wanted to draw just on the cross section here so because this, this is the side view, if we're looking at the end view, then basically what we're saying is this is just y, the, the distance from the neutral axis to this line. And the maximum distance that we can go is uh, same to the, the stress and the strain problems that we were doing in previous videos. We just label that as, uh, as C. In this case, C will be uh, obviously on this side because the side is uh, quite a bit longer than this side. So it's just the, the maximum kind of perpendicular distance from the neutral axis uh, to uh, to the, the furthest point that you can go away. And so then obviously too, if we're coming back to this kind of plane of interest that we're looking at, if we wanted to find the distance, uh, the radius of curvature for, or the distance you know from the center of curvature to that, uh, then that is obviously just going to be rho minus y. All right, so uh, I think that's mostly, oh, we got this thing in here. This is, uh, we'll just call this theta. This is just what we call our our central angle and uh, this is this is important because really what we're seeing here when we have a circular curve uh, the length of AB the length of CD EF 
These are all basically arc lengths that have to do with this theta here and, and the radius to that distance. So actually, if we look at, uh, if we look at line AB, um, and then let's also, let's, let's write them all down for the, the couple lines that we've identified. We have line CD, we have line EF, and we have line GH. Now, if you remember from the last video, and also just by looking at this, uh, when we bend a beam like this, the stuff on the the stuff above the neutral axis gets shorter. You can see this line is shorter than the neutral axis, and stuff below the neutral axis gets longer. So it actually stretches out a little bit. This line GH is a little bit longer, and the neutral axis is that crossover point where actually this line EF on the neutral axis has exactly the same length as it did um, in its undeformed position. So we should probably just label on here that the original length of the beam here. Uh, was uh, had a length of L. So EF, the neutral axis, it, it ends up with a, a final length of L. GH is in tension and it's actually stretched out as you can see, so we're going to have a final length of greater than L. And then for these two guys, A, B, and C, D, both of these lines here are going to be less than L because they're above the neutral axis when we have this type of, uh, of bending with a concave side on the top. And so when we have lengths less than L, uh, again, this is going to be in compression. Uh, this is going to be in compression. Anything above the neutral axis is in compression. So no matter where we put this line CD, it would be in compression. If we drew the plane of interest further down, then, uh, then obviously it would be in, in, in tension. But here, uh, where the length has increased, we get uh, tension. And where the where that right on the neutral axis, it's just chilling. It's not really doing anything. There's uh, there's neither compression nor tension. There's just no stress. All right. So I think that covers everything we need to know. Um, the one thing I just haven't drawn on here is again the neutral axis passes through the centroid of this shape. Boom. This is important when we look at, because we'll be looking at all sorts of different shapes um, or for cross sections of members. Um, but now that we've got this all worked out, we've figured out that these are arc lengths, there's compression, there's tension. We've labeled all this stuff. I think now we're ready for the next video where we're going to start talking about stress and strain uh, due to pure bending in the elastic range.